Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent bringing you episode 1 of a new Let's Play that I plan on getting very far in. This is a serious Let's Play. Um, we're going to have a lot of episodes in it and hopefully reach the end of this smashing dungeon crawler, Swords and Sorcery Underworld. Um, yeah, so this is a party-based dungeon crawler in first-person view with some interesting quirks in combat that we're going to learn about and quirks in the gameplay. So let's just go ahead and hit play and get right into it. See what happens. I don't need to talk and talk and talk. All right. It was uh, illustrated by a professional comics illustrator. So we see very cool illustrations here. Priest in the background. We've got a, what looks like a dwarven axe wielder. Very cool. Let's go ahead and check it out. All right, first let's head to the options. Um, delay one to nine, space to end turn, mouse is enabled, WASD for movement, auto map is on, fluid movement, excuse me, F5 is save, F6 is load, hockey's hidden, hockey's shown, hockey's hidden, hockey's shown, okay, toggle full screen, view range full, music is on, sound effects are on, ambient sound is on. Let's just go ahead and get right into a new game. So we've got a nice illustration here. Peace and prosperity prevailed throughout the known realms for decades. Swords were sheathed and sorcery, still a novelty in these times, employed by an enlightened few and always for the common good. Rival factions had grown accustomed to compromise and even collaboration. So all was well. As we can see here, everybody living in peace. Oh, what do we have here? A dragon. A weird guy stalking here. This skeleton dude. Unnatural creatures of mysterious origin united in hordes. They spread chaos within days throughout lands left unprepared for the onslaught. Skeleton dude, skeleton guy here. Very cool. Looks like they were driven out of the castle or heading towards the castle. Populations rushed to the realm's last standing fortifications for sanctuary. The countryside was left at the mercy of the assailants, and those unable or unwilling to flee were left to face certain death. So they poured into the fortifications, which is very cool looking. Hmm. Food and water supplies are now sorely stretched. Might and ruthlessness govern survival in the streets where guards and militia struggle to maintain order. Those few with some golds in their purses find temporary shelter in the inns and taverns. Pretty neat. We've got like a raven here. This guy seems to be starving a bit. Another raven. Dead person with arrows. Someone whipping somebody. Lots of detail. Adventurers. Very cool. Amidst the ruin and despair, facing depleting funds and the prospect of outliving the innkeeper's hospitality, a band of six adventurers decide to unite their strength and take action. They vow to escape the relative security of the town, find and destroy the cause of their lost freedom, or die trying. And this is us, the six adventurers. Very cool. Alright, selecting an existing character available in this town, or a blank slot to create a new one, starting town only. So we've got six created characters, but we're going to make our own, so let's go ahead and hit G. Alright, pick a class at the top, a race in the middle, and a gender at the bottom. So our party leader... Let's see, we've got knight, paladin, archer, rogue, priest, sorcerer. So we can have one of each. It, sh it seems would be the way to go. Um, humans are the most down to earth of the four races in the known world. This gives them relative immunity to mind influencing spells. Elves benefit from a close relationship to nature in the form of a high resistance to poison and disease. Dwarves are accustomed to long nights drinking strong ale in deep damp caverns. They have unparalleled resistance to sleep. Gnomes are of small stature and more prone to introversion. Their base strength, endurance, and spirit are kept at 10, and they suffer a starting penalty in those attributes. But this is compensated by higher starting accuracy, speed, and luck. 
and we've got a knight. Knights are trained in the art of combat at a young age. Some choose to renounce their claim to the family estate in pursuit of a life of adventuring, which they deem more exciting and potentially more profitable than the responsibilities that come with their birthright. Paladins were knights to be, but either failed their training or chose to renounce their birthright in favor of a higher ideal. They tend to have higher spirit, which would in time give them access to the priest's book of spells, but are also less proficient combatants. Of weaker constitution, but with a keen eye, archers prefer to resolve their conflicts with accuracy and from a distance. A rogue is an outcast from society that has chosen to make his way in an urban environment. Priests have chosen the way of the light and cultivate their own spirit's power. And sorcerers have a natural ability to interact with matter and energy with the sole ability of their intellect. They can use runes collected from creatures with similar abilities to enhance their own. They can memorize a maximum of intellect asterisk spell level. So I think we're going to be a dwarven rogue. Uh, a male dwarven rogue. Pick a portrait for your male dwarf rogue. I think um, maybe this guy right here. Type a name for your male dwarf rogue. Um, how about... Uh, let's see here. Grimsby? Allocate attribute points for Grimsby, the rogue. Grimsby, by first selecting attribute, then using plus or minus. Points remaining six. So, strength and luck to a lesser extent largely determines damage dealt with melee weapons. Most weapons and armor also have a minimum strength requirement for usage. Endurance and luck to a lesser extent determine starting hit points as well as how many HP will be acquired, acquired with each new level. Accuracy and luck to a lesser extent determine the chance to hit a target with both melee and ranged weapons, the possibility of a critical hit or miss, and damage dealt with ranged weapons. Speed determines turns in combat, the fastest amongst characters and enemies get to go f get first go, which can make the difference. Spirit determines proficiency for spiritual magic, priests and paladins, luck can give an edge or a penalty. Intelligence determines proficiency for sorcery, luck can give an edge or penalty, and luck provides bonuses or malices in just about all matters of expertise. The formula in most cases is random luck minus four, which allows for negative scores. So let's see, he's going to be accuracy, so let's go uh, get a point in accuracy, get a point in speed, get a point in luck, and... His accuracy is capped at 5, his speed is 6. Let's get another point of luck. Oh, we have two points remaining. Um, I guess we'll go endurance. And... Strength. Alright. So there's Grimsby. Let's go H. Let's get a female gnome paladin. And I think this pretty young lady right here will be her. How about Laura? Let's see. get a point of spirit get a point of strength get another point of spirit get a point of speed they weren't capped by the way I just didn't click them like it looks like it's capped here but if I click it it gives me the plus minus um, another point of strength and another point of strength so there's Laura now let's get a female human priest. I like this portrait right here, and her name will be Sashani. Um, let's go with spirit, spirit, luck. 
accuracy, spirit, intelligence? No. Yeah, I get a point of intelligence. I think it doesn't. It's not useful for a priestess though. All right, now what's left? We've got a rogue, a priest, and a paladin. Let's get an elven archer, male. I think this fellow uh, here will be good, and his name will be Valorian. And he's going to get a lot of accuracy, a lot of speed, a point of luck, and another point of accuracy. We've got two classes left, the Knight and the Sorcerer. Let's go ahead and get a Dwarven Sorcerer female. And I think her right here. And her name will be... Katla? Katla? She's a sorcerer, so she's going to get intelligence, intelligence, luck, speed, accuracy, and intelligence. Alright, and finally, the last class is a knight. We can go ahead and get a Dwarven Knight, uh, male. This fellow here. And his name will be... Um... Paul? Paul, our Knight. Uh, endurance is good. Let's go ahead and get two points of strength. Let's get a point of accuracy, a point of speed, a point of luck, and another point of strength. And there's our party. Grimsby, Laura, Sashani, Valorian, Katla, and Paul. All right, so... Grimsby, our dwarf... For, well, let's go back. Um, let's put them in order. Uh, let's see. Laura is our known paladin, so let's go ahead and add to party. Then we've got, I think she's a priestess, okay. Archer, sorceress, okay, let's go ahead and add Paul, our male dwarf knight. Um, next in line would be the rogue. Let's go ahead and add Grimsby. Um, Relorian, let's go ahead and add him. Add the priestess, Sashani, and then add Katla and start travels. All right, here we are. I don't know where we are, but we're here. Um, investigate, nothing found. All right, so we could view the party, like so. We could do our lineup, who gets in the right position, but our positions are fine. We can rest, we can investigate, we can look at the options better. Um, quick game now, no. Uh, tutorials. We'll go ahead and look at these. Um, books and a lock. I guess that's unlock when you get into a door. So we have books, a quest log, maps, and a bestiary, which is very cool. Let's go ahead and save. Um, I don't know why it says wow. Um, one. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the tutorials, adventuring tutorial. Welcome to the world of swords and sorcery. This short sequence will give you quick starting introductions. You'll see another when your first combat starts and when you open a character sheet. You can reset any or of all of them at any time using the tutorial option on the right adventuring screen. Party movement can be done by clicking on the direction arrows above. Right clicking will always turn right and the mouse wheel can move the party forward and back. There are four movement schemes to choose from in the options, two of which in it include strafing, left and right strafe, left and right when strafing is enabled, WASD is the default. These buttons are also available. 
This icon opens the party overview. V is the shortcut letter. Letters in parentheses indicate this. This is the lineup option. Use this to rearrange party order. Resting requires one unit of food and water per party member. Resting isn't always safe. Chances for an encounter are increased during rest. All HP and SP are replenished. Spells affecting the party, curses, or individual members, heroism for a day wear out. Harmful conditions such as poison and disease are not cured, however, and ill characters will see their conditions worsen during rest. Returning to an inn has the same resting effect, but some positive effects such as re such are recast, and the game is quick save there. But some positive effects are recast. Okay. Investigating searches the area for treasure and clues. Books give access to important documents in the party's possession. One, the quest journal reminds you of requests that have made been made to you that you haven't completed yet. Two, maps open a larger local map with flags indicating places of interest, your current coordinates, and access to the world map. The world map illustrates each area you visited. You can click on an icon to open the corresponding map. The bestiary is a compilation of monster descriptions. To collect the necessary information, you need to use a priest level 2 spell called Read Mind. The padlock icon is slightly highlighted when you try to open a door and need to unlock. The locked message must be showing. Once you've chosen that option, you need to pick the party member that will try to do this. Rogues are naturally the most apt for this task, high thievery score. The help icon allows you to reset this tutorial sequence as well as combat and character sequences. And options customize your gameplay. There are se several aspects you can choose to reconfigure, including, including disabling the mouse, switching to these letters, disabling auto mapping, switching to instant movement, language choices, English or French, and sound options. You can also enable disab disable the play displaying of hotkeys where only icons are shown. Clicking on a character portrait 1 to 6 will open that character sheet with inventory, stats, and skills. A dedicated tutorial sequence, sequence will demonstrate all available options. On the left side of each portrait, a green life bar is displayed. It turns red if HP falls below 30%. For spellcasters, a blue bar indicates spell points, and a purple bar indicates spell components. We see that. Priests and paladins, starting at level 5, use holy water, HW, and can carry a maximum of 40. Sorcerers use runes. There is no limit to how many they can memorize, but the bar indicates how many they have relative to 100. A name written in orange indicates a serious condition. Red means death. Characters can be healed with spells or at the temple if your party can afford it. Don't forget that you can reset tutorials like this one with the tutorial option. Keyboard shortcuts can be displayed via the options. So that's our first tutorial. Let's go ahead and look at the character sheet. So initiate Laura, initiate Paul. They're all initiates. No experience. We can see their stats. Um, we can see what they're carrying. A walking stick, a simple walking stick and a poor weapon. Replace it as soon as possible. One-handed, plus 0 0.2 base damage, minimum strength 2, value 5 gold. And a sling. Sticks break bones, stones do as well. Missile, 0 0.20 per, uh, range damage, minimum strength 2. Um, and everybody seems to be carrying that. Tab will open the grimoire. Okay, so let's look at the wait. Let's look at the spells. Um, Sashani. Sashani has holy water. Blesses a unit of water, making it holy water, a useful component for many priest spells. Holy water cannot be cast during combat. SP one out of eight. Um, holy water zero out of zero when it's a non-combat spell. Bless all. Blesses the entire party, enabling them to afflict physical damage to the undead. Their ability to inflict physical damage to others is also slightly increased. The spell wears off during rest. So that takes 6 out of 8 spell points and 6 holy water and we have 0. Purify invokes a cleansing fire within the enemy that feeds on its hostility towards the party and causes damage based on spirit regardless of any kind of resistance. 1 spell point, 1 holy water in combat. And first aid heals the selected party member restoring HP based on the caster's spirit and to a lesser extent luck. Takes one out of eight and no holy water. Now let's look at Katla. She's got burning hand. Searing heat emanates from the sorcerer's hand and inflicts damage based on the caster's intelligence and luck. This requires contact, therefore both the caster and target must be in the melee. One out of eight spell points, no runes, combat spell. Animal hide toughens the target's skin, adding three points of armor. One spell point. Arcane bolt. The sorcerer taps into the demonic evil that permeates the world and generates a blast that damages the target based on intelligence and luck. Score is multiplied by level. One spell rune, one or one spell point, one rune, and it's a combat spell. This can be cast outside of combat. 
and alert wakens all sleeping companions one spell point no runes so that would be in a sticky situation we need to uh, like if they catch us sleeping <clears throat> we can go ahead and cast alert and everybody will be awake so those are our tutorials um we'll get one when we go into combat i'm going to save here and we'll officially start the let's play next time this was the character creation slash tutorial episode hope you enjoy and i hope you enjoy the episodes to come we're going to have a lot of fun in this game and we're going to try to get to the end and and beat it eventually but we'll enjoy the journey of course getting there uh thank you for watching i appreciate it leave me a comment i always love reading them if you like you don't have to and if you've made it this far much love peace and joy guys uh, I'll catch you next time with more. So long.